lot of terms being thrown around. You mentioned something really important in configuration management land, which is test, get, and set, which I learned when I was delving into writing my own DSC resources, which like, don't do that if you can possibly avoid it. But can you explain kind of what that, those three things are? Sure. So when uh, DSC runs or any other item potent configuration, they have several functions. So let's use the example of creating a directory. So if you create a directory, it's a command line, it'll work the first time. Great. Try to create it again and it'll fail because it exists. And so that's where the test comes into play. So if you wanted to add some air handling to your create uh, directory function, you would do a test path in PowerShell or some kind of if statement, maybe in bash again, my bash is weak. Um, to do some air handling. And so that's what the resources, um, those methods of the resource do is they allow you to say, hey, we're about to set this, let's test the condition and determine if we need to execute set. So in DSC land and configuration management land, you would run your test first. Does this folder exist? If it does, does it have the right properties? Does it have the right name? Uh, and if that test fails for whatever reason, it'll invoke the set. But if it passes true uh, and the test goes fine, then it'll leave it alone and you won't evoke it. And that is how you handle configuration drift in your environment. Uh, and also because configuration management is item potent, you can run it over and over again and make sure that you're correcting the drift, uh, but also know, hopefully, if you've written your resources right, that you're not going to destroy something when you run it again, unlike a, a PowerShell script with no air handling. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, I think we've thrown around the word item potent and item potency about a half a dozen times without defining it, but it's come up an awful lot here. But that, that's the idea of that we're trying to get to a known state. We're not just blindly changing things. We're looking at the state of something and making that state reflect whatever the playbook is saying it needs to reflect. So sometimes there's changes involved. Sometimes there's not. Sometimes we're removing something. Sometimes we're adding something, but we're going to get to that known state. So that, that, that's what we're getting at there with that term, right? Absolutely. And then I, I forgot to mention the get. So the get is usually uh, used for compliance where you would invoke the get to retrieve information. What is the current state? I'm not testing it. I'm not setting it. I want to retrieve and validate. Um, and then that comes into play when you want to make people feel comfortable. Uh, it's a great tool to pull information and be like, it's doing exactly what we said it was going to do. It changed what we wanted it to. Here's the current settings. And it gives you a method to call that without having to write your own. Again, this is why configuration management tools add so much value is they prevent you from writing a lot of code. Mm -hmm. That would, would be, it's funny. I, I work in Python and to, to set something to that state and make sure it doesn't have anything additional it is exactly that. It's a lot of code. Oh, 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 oh,